risk it. All right. Okay, today we're gonna to take a few notes just on the basics. We're probably looking at our first book assignment, actual book assignment tomorrow. Um, textbooks, you need a book cover on them. So when is that due? Tomorrow or? Friday. Friday. Tomorrow or Friday. So get, get a book cover on that. It's gonna be your first book assignment. You don't wanna be failing the first week of, uh, of you know, consumer maps just because you forgot a book cover. So get it on there. Uh, it could be a bag, it could be uh, the sake stretchy thing, it could be something really cool I don't even know about. So just make sure that you are uh, that you are trying to uh, you're trying to get that book cover on. If you need a bag, I can provide you one. I think I got like a hundred of them back in the back here. So uh, so if you have your notes, let's take out your notes real quick. I'm going to take attendance as you guys are doing it. Uh, so get out your notes. We'll take a few things. Yeah, I'm expecting at least one person to be joining here pretty soon. Right. Take attendance here. Okay, here's your schedule today. We're out of here at 10:18, so keep that in mind. 10:18. Uh, so it's the same schedule from yesterday. Yep, it's going to be probably the same schedule for the next couple days. So I'd like to just kind of remind you of that. Uh, next period is period six, so keep that in mind. Okay, so let's let's walk through kind of what we're doing today. Um, we're talking about wages. So we're in the first section of your textbook. So section one one, and we're going to be dealing with one point two as well. I'm kind of mixing them two together. They're the same topic. Now the topic that we're talking about, and I kind of introduced it yesterday, was wages. I think I wrote it on the board. Just what we we're going to discuss today. Wages is that pay you get for working you know, a certain job. So there's a couple different types of wages. Um, so you could be on a contract kind of type of wage where you, you get paid whatever that contract states. That's kind of how mine works. I, I know what my annual wages are, my annual salary. So annual salary. It's how much do I get paid per year? That's what annual means. So in fact, I'm going to mark that down. So annual, this word, means yearly. So a yearly salary. Sometimes you have a job. It's kind of nice if you know what you're going to get paid. You know, you know exactly what your paycheck is from month to month to month. Even if the month changes, you know what you're going to get paid because it's it's set in stone. Question. Uh, don't you have to make a hourly or a daily requirement? Like days that you have to actually have to be there, otherwise you don't get your salary. Depends on the job. Depends on the job. So um, I know, like for mine, yeah, I have to be under contract for the school for my my time. I have to put in 193 days of school. You guys are 180. I have to put in 193. That's professional development. That's other things. So in my contract, yeah, I do have to meet certain requirements. Some jobs don't. It's just your salary is what you get. You could put in. You know, 180 days of the year, you could be putting in 365. It just depends what that job calls for. Um, sometimes it's seasonal, so you just, you're only available in the spring, and that's what you just get paid for. Uh, but it's an annual salary. Um, you could be putting in as many hours as possible. Like, think about it this way. Like, I know what I get paid per year. I know that I have to fulfill 193 days. I put in way more than 193 days in my contract. Um, because everyone's like, oh, you you know, you get summers off. I never get a summer off. I'm constantly here. I know that's it seems weird, but I I'm here more sometimes in the summer than I am during the school year sometimes, just because of the amount of hours I have to put in. So, um, and that's the sad part about an annual salary is it doesn't put in consideration that sometimes here at the school I put in a 14, 15 hour day because I'm here from seven in the morning and I don't get back from basketball until midnight. You know, like. They're not even considering that time that I just put in, right? So that's something to think about. Um, but annual salary, yearly based. Now, you could be, an, an, instead of under contract, you could be on an hourly rate. 
Now this is completely different. Now you're getting paid per hour. Okay, so there there could be certain jobs that maybe you're under both. Maybe you are under a, a contract and you're gonna get an hourly rate plus the contract. So how that would work, maybe maybe you have to put in so many days a week at your job. Maybe you're a car salesman, right? Um, so you're gonna be selling cars. Well, you get paid a certain annual salary just to be on the job, but then you get paid per hour or get commission. There's different things. So we'll talk about commission. That's one of the later sections where you make money on the sales you make. Um, but these are the two main ones. Contract, so annual salary versus an hourly rate. These are the two I want to focus on today. Now, I'm going to just see how, what is a full work week? You guys even know? 40 hours. Full work week is 40 hours a week. After 40 hours, by by you know government standards, it's overtime, and you have to be paid accordingly for overtime. But a 40-hour work week is full. Um, as students, as somebody under the age of 18, um, you guys are not legal to be working 40 hours a week. I think the max you guys can put in, at least when I was in school, it was 32. You had to be part time. Um, now it's even more restrict. I think you can only put in 15 to 20 hours or something like that unless you meet a certain hourly rate. What do you mean for the hours a week? You're busy legal. You're busy legal. So, you know, so, it's illegal for anyone under the age of 18. Think about it that way. Yeah. So, what was that? Yeah. <laughs> so, all right, uh, but yeah, so full work week, 40 hours. Now, let's talk about the rates. So, uh, if you don't mind, since you have a job, you know what your hourly rate is, if you don't mind sharing. You can make up a number if you want. Two. $2 an hour? 50 bucks an hour, okay, so let's say, let's say you're making $50 an hour, $50 per hour. I like your job, I would also work 40 hours a week if that was the case. Uh, so, let's talk about how much you get eight per week. So, so if you're getting paid fifty dollars per hour, what that means, and so if you're doing the math here, fifty dollars per hour per one hour, that's what that means. That's a fraction. When you multiply it by the number of hours, forty hours, what happens here is the labels cancel. This is called the cancellation rule for changing labels on on problems. The diagonal labels, if they're the same label, they would cancel each other out. And what is the only label you have left? Dollars. So it's how much you get paid. So the diagonals, if they match, they would cancel each other out. And then the idea is that you just multiply. You multiply straight across. So if I multiply it straight across, uh, 50 times 40, that would end up being 2,000. And the one would be on the bottom. And you divide by one, and you'd end up with two. 2,000 right. 2, divided by 1 would be 2,000. Did I do my math right? So you double check me. I think I did my math right. 40 times 50. So, in theory, if you worked a 40 hour work week, you'd make at $50 an hour, you'd make two grand a week. Now, are you going to take home two grand a week? Not even close. Um, the reason being is that um, taxes, health insurance, all these other things come off the top. In fact, let's make a list of things that you know that come off the top. So these are these are the, the parts of the these are the parts of the real world that you have to think about when you get your paycheck for the first time. Because you might be doing this calculation like, oh man, I'm making two grand this week, I'm gonna go spend it all. You can't, because you're not getting it. So what are what are the reductions in your pay? This is a part of you know the gross pay and net pay. So we're, we'll talk about this topic here, gross versus net pay. What are the deductions coming off of your paycheck? Please. The state tax, okay. government. Yep, state tax, federal tax. Um, FICA. Which is federal tax, yes, I agree with that. Keep going, you're on a roll. Um, insurance. Insurances, any type of insurance. It could be a dental, it could be life, it could be um, just normal health insurance. There's lots of insurances that can come off. Anything else you can think of? Who do you guys know? 
you're on a roll. Social security from Delta. Uh, maybe your insurance is FICA. Maybe that's maybe that's part of uh, part of it. Um, it could be uh, alimony, child support could come off the top. It could be um, there could be um, some type of retirement fund that comes off the top. Retirement. Um, if you have a health benefit, and I'm not talking health insurance, a health benefit that comes off the top maybe um, for like the school here um, we can choose if we want to have a uh, membership at the Y come right off the top uh, the, uh, the, the uh, YMCA okay. um, we, could, we could have that come off the top there's a list of things I mean etc 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 for retirement um, for as a teacher or any government employee you know IPERS that comes off the top it could be a 401k if you're working for a larger corporation it could be a stock investment portfolio that maybe your company automatically sets up for you. I know like Stellar and IMT does that for you and you can make very, very good money by doing that. Now, these are all the things that come off the top, right? Right off the top. So what they always tell you is that when you have your paycheck, expect about, about they say about a third to a half of it's coming off for this stuff. A third to a half. That is a very large number. A third is about 30%. It's 33.3 repeating percent. So 33.3%, which is this number, or half, which is half is 50%, and that would be 0.5. Now, how that number comes into play, you take that decimal, the 0.33 or the 0.5, you multiply it on, and it tells you what they're taking off the top. So half, you're down to a thousand bucks, right? Because half, 0.5 times 2,000. So that's that's like the easiest number in the world to do. If you took 2,000 times 0.5, you have $1,000 coming off the top. So that means you have $1,000 left to spend. If you had 33.3%, um, so 0 0.3333 three, and you have a bunch of those times 2,000. You're looking at $666.66 coming off the top. If I did my math right, somebody double check me. So about 600 bucks coming off the top. So you can already expect in that range that you're being left with about 1,000 bucks if you want to estimate. Still pretty good money for a week. Week's worth of pay. That's something that a lot of people don't think of. It's like, uh, I know when I first got out of college, I never even thought about that. I never even thought about the real world situation, about you know what my job was going to be, how much I was going to get paid per hour. Because when I started working at Ventura in 2006, my paycheck wasn't great as a teacher. I understood it wasn't. I mean, it was even less back then, significantly less back then. But to give you an idea, I knew that when I went in, I knew that these things would come off the top, so I already kind of knew. I knew what my annual salary was going to be, so I'll give you an example of that here in a minute. But what I didn't think about was real life expenditures that come off the top. Student loans, car payment, um, you know, my cost of living in my apartment at the time. I never thought about that. I was just barely breaking even. Barely breaking even. And I could not spend a single penny on anything else. So I had to be super tight on what I spent money on. I had to cut out a lot of things I didn't need at the time. So, uh, but that's something you think about. So let's talk about the annual salary. So that was hourly rate, right? You know what you make per hour? We, it could be anything, it doesn't have to be 50, it could be anything, but you get the idea how you do it. Now, let's do an annual salary. I'm gonna give you the example of mine. So, my annual salary, when I first started at Ventura, for a year, was $24,760 a year. It's not good, just to tell you that. Now, that's per year. So that was my annual salary. And that's not even, you know, taking consideration that they're taking state tax out, federal tax insurances, my 
Social Security, my retirement IFRS. That's coming off the top. So if I'm getting half of that, I'm getting paid twelve thousand dollars a year in cash. Okay, just to give you an idea, somebody working out, you know, McDonald's makes more money than that. Just telling you right now. <laughs> so it was not very good at the time. I didn't know that. You know, I was, I was just excited to be teaching. Now, here's the idea. That's what I'm making per year. How much do I make per month? Well, how many months are in a year? 12. 12. You divide it by 12. So, does somebody have a calculator on hand? If you don't, I'll use one. Okay. Alright. So, $24,760. Divided by 12, I'm getting paid $2,000. 63.3 repeating dollars per month. So, in cash, I'm making about a thousand bucks. Now, if, you, if we stick with that idea of about half of this coming off. So, I'm making about a thousand bucks. So, to give you an idea of why that was so concerning to me, is because my student loan payment that I was paying back to Iowa State was about a thousand dollars that I paid since 2006 a month. Well, here's the concerning part, right? So I know that I'm taking home cash of a thousand dollars, roughly. It's roughly a thousand bucks in cash. My student loans, I think when I ended up was like seven hundred or six hundred and seventy-five bucks. That was my student loan through Iowa State. And that it's a thirty-year loan through Iowa State when you take out your loans for your for your student loans. That leaves me with like two, three hundred dollars left. In fact, thousand dollars minus thousand dollars minus the six seventy five. It's leaving me with three hundred twenty five dollars. My car payment at the time was two hundred and three. That was my car payment was two hundred and three dollars. So subtract two hundred three. It leaves me with one hundred twenty two dollars left for food and my apartment. Wrap your head around that one. A month. So, what I had to do, what I found out real quick after the first year, was number one, I had to get a super cheap apartment at the time. Like, really cheap. I sold my car, so I get a really cheap car at the time, because I was driving a BMW at the time. Um, so I sold that, got a really cheap car, and then what I did was I, instead of just going off my yearly salary, I coached every sport that I could. So I got a, I got a coaching certificate. I coached football, volleyball, cross country, and track. Because that added, that added more to my, my contract. So that I could bump that number up as high as I could go. So I coached every sport. I was never home. Ever home. So that's why I didn't care about the apartment. So I had to think about it. This is a real life situation you have to think about. I didn't think about it until later. Now, obviously my, my pay is significantly bumped up. You know, I moved to Garner, they pay a lot better. But the idea is that like, this is a real world situation. I had to figure out real quick when I got out of college on my own. Like that was not gonna work. Now, when you think about that, I was never home. If I would have been on an hourly rate, I would have made bank. Because I was at school from, you know, 7 in the morning to, you know, 8, 9 o'clock at night every night of the week. And then Saturdays, I had games. It was wild how much I was, you know, at school and working. But it was one of those things like real world situations you had never think about it. All right, questions at all about the two topics I've covered today? Okay, tomorrow. We're gonna get our first book sent of the year tomorrow. Um, it'll be in section one one. We're gonna look at you know what hourly rates are. So I'll give you a couple more examples. I'll have you try out some. You will want a calculator tomorrow. So make sure you find a calculator and bring it tomorrow. Um, bring your textbook. So book cover, even if the book cover's not on it, you need your textbook tomorrow. And then Friday will be the last day I'll check for the book cover. Got it? Okay, cool. That's all we got today.